That is the Sunni Islamic position, right? That to deduct God's reason, to deduct God's essence through philosophy is an improper um, methodology. Okay, right? but your methodology. Yeah, no, I'll explain why. I'll explain why. Okay, first of all, we as Sunni Muslims, we just take what God has said in the Quran and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said about God in the Hadith, right? So that's the reason. When we understand the reason. Okay, that's one reason, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. There's no philosophy there in trying to understand God's essence there, right? Once again, why? Guess, guess, why? Because, because, okay, 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 my friend. Yeah, sure, look, sure. Look, look, the thing is, I'm going to be here next week, right? Yeah, yeah. I would love to, because my yeah, side, yeah, sure. uh, and, and look, basically, I agree to disagree. My stance yeah. on it is, I love philosophy, I love to... Okay, why? Well, well, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. What if the philosophy of the current time yes. is pointing towards your understanding of Christianity being... Okay, what if the philosophy at that time is pointing to the incoherence of Jesus being God? The philosophy at that time, you mean like, at the time Okay, the philosophy or? now. So the philosophy of this time, from a Christian position, right? Like, say, Let's say Christianity is true. What if the philosophy of this time is pointing towards Jesus not being God? And then actually, if like in the future, philosophy develops, like philosophical positions develop where their stronger positions than the one we have today, and they do point towards Jesus being God. Okay. Is it appropriate to use the philosophy of this time to try and show that Jesus is not um, is not God? The thing is, for me, several times over the history of yeah. mankind, yeah. they've used several philosophical concepts mm -hmm. to show that Jesus Christ isn't God. I have no issue with that because we ourselves bring a rebuttal yeah, yeah. of our own philosophical. Sure. Uh, uh, of, of, uh, we ourselves bring a rebuttal of our own philosophical standpoint on it. Sure. So if you go to the church fathers, for example, yeah. they have their own philosophical standpoints of these things. So you can go through the greatest minds in history and just learn from them and, and see yeah. how do they think about these things. So personally, I don't see. I don't think that thinking about God philosophically is a bad thing. Like for example, the philosophy. Uh, for example, can I? God bless you. Is bless the question? God bless you. Is the question that why do we use like philosophers that don't believe in the same God? No, no, no. So, no, no. so, so the, I, I can. Yeah, um, yeah, if it's okay. Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying is to understand God's essence, right? Mm -hmm. It's not an appropriate methodology to use philosophy, to use philosoph philosophical um, arguments to try and deduct God's essence through philosophy. Why? Why? Is Why? It not? For, because you know, you know what, what if, if the philosophy of this time, for example, mm -hmm. contradicts what you believe is divine revelation, are you going to go with the divine revelation or are you going to go with the philosophy? Well, that would be fallacious because um, the philosophy of, the, of this time, although even if it was made on this time, it would have a root basis. I can go back to the root basis to understand where the concept is. You know, so if someone says, let's say, the, let's say, yeah, sure. even if you want to, let's argue your position, yeah. the philosophy of this time, like let's say the philosophy of this time, the whole LGBT rainbow rainbow flag, I'm not going to use LGBT rainbow flag to, to, to prove the essence of God, even though it's the philosophy no, of no, this time. No, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about specifically God's essence. So yeah. no, I'm not talking about philosophy in general, okay. you understand? Like I'm talking specifically about God's essence. Mm -hmm. To use, what I'm saying is just purely on God's essence, to use philosophy to deduct and understand the the essence of, and nature of God mm -hmm. is inappropriate from a religious position. No, it's not. Why? Because God gave us wisdom and he implies that the, the fact that we try to get to um, um, to go to heaven means we, we try to get to know God. We can ask any, any questions as we want. Upon my theory, um, philosophy, yeah. God, God said that ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be opened unto you, and um, seek and you shall find. So if I'm asking for knowledge, and I'm knocking for knowledge, and I'm seeking for knowledge of God, God will reveal, that, that will be revealed. So you're saying through your deductive reasoning, you can understand God's nature and God's essence. Yeah. Well, uh, you can understand man, the con... Us as being man, to worship God means to know who we're worshipping. If we're going to know who we're worshipping, we can, but we can do try not, and know him But does, 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 um, you know, do, does, divine rep, sorry, does divine revelation not take precedence over your logic? What do you mean? Like, what if, if... Yes, it does. Yeah, that would be primary right? principle. That's, that's yes. what I'm saying. That would be primary principle. But from primary principle, I can make my own reasoning. You know, like for example, primary principle says that in the beginning was the word, the word was uh, was with God, the word was God. Mm -hmm. My reasoning will say, and then he says the word to on flesh. My reasoning will, will say, God to on flesh. See, primary reason is there, yeah. and then I philosophize it, and I say, God to on flesh. 
Okay. Your philosophical reasoning has to be backed by scripture. Ooh. And that's the main basis of everything here. When uh, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Scripture. But that's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, if, if script, okay, if your scripture contradicts what is your philosoph philosophical reasoning, you would go with the scripture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you wouldn't have a sound philosophically back up. Yeah. But what we're saying is, when you talk and discuss about you know philosophy of, yeah. of, of, of religion, you run it under the, the, the precipice that it or is scripture. by scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but if, we you can, have... if you can prove that it's not, yeah. then that's, that's what you do to obviously try and debunk an argument. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, hey, bro, uh, how you doing, man? But, yeah, I, I don't want to drag it on too long, but I'm saying, like, our scripture... Okay, so it has to go back to the scripture, right? Yeah. It yeah. Does, yeah, and if the philosophy of the time looks like it's looks looks like it's contradicting scripture, then we leave, it. Then we leave this philosophy, because right? Because Smith is out the window. Exactly, exactly. That's 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 what that's the, that's why my position is that well, if the philosophy of the time. The as well. so, no, no, but I'm saying the philosophy. If if like say for example, someone uses philosophical philosophical arguments about God's nature and God's essence against me, right? And they're using philosophy that I can't necessarily break down logically at that point in time, mm -hmm. right? And I can't argue against in that point in time, logically, that doesn't necessarily mean my position is wrong if my position is, is um, that I'm holding to divine revelation. Well, and it's correct divine revelation, very right? Fair. Yeah. But if even though you don't know, yeah. but their philosophy, philosophy upon the subject makes sense, it doesn't matter if you don't know, their logic is still sound. So if, if you don't if well, you believe I mean, it or not, but, like let's say you, yeah. you can believe that well, five, well, two plus two equals ten. Sure. And I and I came to correct you and said two plus. Um, actually, you can you can believe that you don't know what two plus two is. Sure. Yeah. Or you have a firm foundation that two plus two equals ten. And yeah. then I come to you and say no, two plus two equals equals five. Um, um four. Yeah. And I gave you my fair reasoning to it. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what you believe anymore. Yeah, I just came with it. Um, but the, but the, thing, the thing is, like, you know, like philosophy is like a science where it refines and models come about, which are more refined and more developed than the ones before, right? Yeah. So like, you know how we have Newtonian, I'm, I'm, I'm more science background than philosophy, right? So if you have Newtonian mechanics and then Einstein's theory of general relativity and special relativity refine that model a bit more, right? I'm saying, say the philosophy that we are operating under now, and you're saying it's based off sound logic it's and whatever, gonna, yeah. if it's based off divine revelation and everything, that is a model at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And there could be models in, employed in the future, which are more refined, more, like more, yeah. you know, we developed models. Yeah. We have that so in Christendom. You have that in Christendom, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm saying like using logical philosophy now to deduct the essence and nature of God and understand those concepts, you're using a philosophy that is a model at the end of the yeah. day and could be corrected later on mm -hmm. by more refined models. Yeah. And also, that shows that even if logically, like logically, right, philosophically, we can like try and show that um, like your this position is wrong yeah. from a theological angle. If that theological position is from divine revelation, then you go with the divine revelation at the end of the day. But if it's not, then we reject it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it comes down to divine revelation, well, right? It doesn't come. Yeah. You can't win an argument based well, off philosophy. You have yeah. to go to the yeah, divine you can, revelation. Yeah, you can. There, is, there is a truth. There is truth in philosophy. Yeah, okay, there's truth. But I'm saying you can't win an argument about you God's essence someone. and nature no, you can't using philosophy. Mind. You can, because there is truth about God's nature. But you can't change someone's mind because you have false knowledge of someone. Okay, so you're saying. But okay, uh, I mean, I thought we were almost there. I thought we almost agreed. But you're saying that. You can't, you, okay, you're saying that... Um, like, I'll give you an example. Yeah, sure. I'll give you an example. Your scholars, yeah. your um, philosophers, your Sunni, right? Yeah. They tell you the, the attributes of Allah. Yeah. And, and although you might not know how it looks like, they tell yeah. you the attributes of it. You know? Sure, sure. But those attributes are not like demonstrated in the Quran. So they philosophize it based on the, um, um, they're not like given these are the attributes, but they're, they're there, like the days like Rahman Rahim, you know. So they, Rahman. later on, Make a progressive. They, they they um make a progression upon the base knowledge that they have been given for you to follow along. So, although the revelation, uh, what they're giving you is new, even if it's modern, 
or um, earlier to the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. Although it's new, doesn't stop um, the basis being true. If they say something that's contrary to their basis, is when then they will reject them because they're not talking about the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. like for, for me, for us in Christendom, we have a term called progressive revelation, sure. where there is a basis of, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then after that, we start philosophizing everything. So God revealed, um, what is revealed to us is, is the basis. And then after we ask and, and answer questions upon everything. Even if someone comes up with a new term today, yeah, to fully describe the Trinity, yeah, and it seems very accurate. The truth, we don't change for the truth. I mean, the truth doesn't change for us, we change for the truth. No matter who says it. If, if Mustache Man comes today and says one plus one equals two, yeah. and that no, was okay, a so like, if, I have I'm sorry, I'm just a bit tired, but like, okay, just to like understand, if um, through logical philosophy, the Trinity seems illogical, right? No, logical, very logical. No, no, I'm saying if the, if the, okay, if okay. the philosophy of the time, yeah. the Trinity is appearing as illogical, yeah. you would dismiss that philosophy, right? Because uh, I'm talking about the, uh, I understand you brought up the attributes, but I'm talking about the essence and nature of God mm -hmm. to understand Him whether he's divinely simple, simple or essence energy, whatever you guys believe. To understand that, you have to go with the divine revelation and what the divine revelation is pointed to. Yeah. And the philosophy, sure, you can use that as a basis and try and use that, but it's not going to actually give you the answer to what God's nature is. It's not, yeah. yeah, yeah that's true. it, that's it's it. Just, well, well, humans, um, um, and your friend, your friend was using philosophy to try and understand God's nature and God's, God's essence. Young Bob. Uh, yeah, yeah, young Bob. Well, I mean, it, um, you can't understand it fully. I don't, I don't think you would agree that you can understand but, it. Do, do you guys like not agree that like he was using that as a way of trying to prove that our like, God yeah. is wrong? Well, I wasn't there the whole time. I mean, sure, sure, but that's. I can, like, I can, you, what was the argument he was laying down? Was he, he was, he was using the whole that, God, uh, God is parts uh, argument. Uh, yes. And he's yes. getting that not I through divine sense. revelation or from your Christian position. He's getting that through philosophy. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, so his argument is not necessarily. He hasn't. How he's a, because he's, he's a <coughs> critic of it. Critics operate by different fields. They operate under the, the questioning field. That's why he came to question you. Yeah, so you, you are the ones that have to go with divine revelation. You have a basis. He doesn't. He's only questioning your basis. So he's doing um, an eternal critique. Yeah, but he's, he's using philosophy. Your, yes, he's using philosophy why. to question our divine revelation, yes. right? You know but we Quran go with our divine revelation. No, the Quran is... Uh, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about God. I'm surely purely talking about the philosophy around God's essence and God's nature yeah. and what God is, right? Yeah. I'm not talking about any other philosophy. So I'm talking about that philosophy, right? Where he's using philosophy to try and understand God's nature and God's essence, yeah, absolutely fine. right? And he's critiquing our divine revelation based off that philosophy. Absolutely fine. So because if because I can't... Look at it like this. The Quran makes the same argument against agreed us. That. Apologies. The yeah, Quran makes it... But no, upon the, the person who is making the argument that already has that basis, they have to go from their basis. But whoever's critiquing, they don't have to start from their basis. They, they, can, they can do an eternal critique and say, this is what your position is, but this is my argument. You know, they don't have to go with their basis because they're not operating under, under that rule. I'll give you an example. Sure. The Quran makes a uh, 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 critique upon um, the Bible. Yeah. When it talks about um, Jesus eating and, and, and sleeping and being taken care of. It makes an eternal critique upon us. Yeah. We, we don't have to say, oh, because you came 600 years later, yeah. your argument doesn't sound. Yeah. No, we have to say, well, even if you're, you came 600 years later or um, yesterday, yeah. if you come out with this question, we should, we, I should go back to my basis. But you see, you see, uh, uh, the, the, okay, so that, that, is, I, I, I understand, I understand, you know, I understand what you're saying, but that's talking about, but I'm talking purely about God's nature and essence. Yes. That, that you can't use, with that. no, no, because this is, this is like, Jesus eating and um, whatever is yes, talking nature. about his nature and yeah. that's a, if you're saying that's a philosophical yes, argument then sure but like it's about it's about a creation right it's about we're talking it's about, about a creation about Jesus as a human about, no, as a human about an essence not necessarily creation well, I'm talking about the essence of Jesus Christ like yeah. the Quran is an argument sure but it's a created essence, essence, it's, essence wait, from, a, from an Islamic it. position it's a created essence I mean it's like yeah. a created essence right whereas when we're talking about God we the both agree it's still, uncreated. Well, That's fine, yeah, yeah. but the argument still stands the same. If I'm critiquing the essence, if he was critiquing the essence of Allah, yeah, as an um, external person that's making an eternal critique, it doesn't have to start with the But basis. I'm saying the strong... Okay, I'm going to wrap up because yeah. I feel like we're uh, going... But the strongest, like, those philosophical things, those philosophical arguments against God nature are always going to be, um, uh, what's the word, like, under 
scriptures. Divine revelation and the scripture. Unless, that's only if you're bound by divine, that specific divine revelation. If you're not, it doesn't fall, it doesn't have any rules against you, upon you. You can sure. ask okay. on any, okay. anything. Okay. So yeah, he was fair. finding, asking, philosophizing the... Yeah, yeah but, I'm, I'm, but yeah, it's about divine revelation. I believe as a Sunni that the Quran is divine revelation. I ha stand by everything that's mentioned now, in the Quran and... Yeah, now that, the that's the question. You believe that yeah. um, Allah is eternal, yeah. the Quran is eternal, the 99 attributes are eternal. But yeah, Allah and the Quran, I mean the Quran and the attributes are not Allah. That's multiple eternal beings. But you see, they don't okay, have, okay, to okay, have no, no. eyes and hands and... We wouldn't, build, okay, no, you know, no. Multiple eternal beings. Uh, let me, let me just like clarify the position, I have to be really careful with the wording. I it can answer, but it's just I need to be really careful. Because I don't want to fall into like heresy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And plus, um, by asking that question about partialism, it's not necessarily taken out of your sources. Okay, so, it's so, actually looking into your sources. So, like, the phrase, like you're mentioning, the attributes of God are distinct from His essence, from His essence, right? Not distinct, separate. Did you say distinct or separate? They are separate because they're not Him. Distinct implies that they're the same essence. Distinct implies like, that. Like my fingers yes. are distinct from my hand, but yeah. they're not separate from my hand. The attributes of Allah in yeah. the Quran are separate from Him. They are created. I wouldn't. I, I don't. Well, that's not okay. a Sunni position, though. That's the thing. Okay. No. Okay. 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 Let me just let me just like read out the Sunni position. Okay. The phrase "the attributes of God are distinct to His essence" relates back to the manner in which God conceives an attribute and an essence. While the phrase "the attributes of God are not other than His essence" refers to attributes always requiring an essence to subsist through, and the fact that the attributes essence are inseparable in the external realm of existence as opposed to purely rational conceptualization. Okay? So, technically, technically, it is not accurate to state that the attributes of God are not other than God. It's not, it's not rational. Rather, the correct expression is that the attributes of God are not other than His essence, other than the essence. So, they are they the exact same thing as His essence? This is because the expression God does not refer merely to the essence, but to an essence ascribed with specific attributes, right? That's fine. Well, are those attributes identical to his essence? Like Ir Rahman, yeah. is that the, can I, is it, um, is Ir Rahman, Ir Rahim, no, no, those two attributes, can I just um, um, worship that? No, 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 so that's, that's so worshipping, worshipping an so attribute on its own is yeah. um, like, Sure. Okay, so that part of Allah you yeah. can't worship, or you can you have to worship Allah, um, um, His essence. Because you said the you, from your the attributes, like we don't the attributes are derived from they happen start from Him. Okay, but he's going back into the argument. Yeah. You know, so if they happen starting from Him, but you can't, they're not holistically Him. That's a part of Him. Just like I gave you my, yeah, my hands, no right? reason. My fingers are a part of my hand, okay. but they're not separate from my hand. So if you hold on to the Lord. Uh, for example, like Allah will be the, the hand, the attributes will be the but, fingers. But the thing is, it, isn't, it, isn't... Am I able to like worship each individual fingers? Okay, okay. But so, uh, you're, Eastern, you're Eastern Orthodox, right? I just want to clarify... No, I'm non-denomination. Non-denomination, okay. Because okay. I just wanted to check one thing quickly. Sorry, sorry bro, I know it's... No, 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 it's absolutely fine. I mean, if you're down to a whole conversation, it's absolutely I'm down to it. Okay, but like, um, I mean, for us, we, we're just pretty much fine because that argument on their side is really bad. Yeah, no, I'm saying it's very common. Yeah, so what was that? He said the common um, arguments in the past is Jesus is um, uh, doing nature and as Allah's essence. That's very, the main topic. Very, it's very it's interesting. Like that. Died, yeah. I came back to life. Which I find Okay, so like, like, okay, so I just want to clarify. Are you Orthodox or Catholic? Uh, same as it. Same as it. Okay. Okay. Um, so the Orthodox position, from my understanding, asserts that God's essence is absolutely unknowable and transcendent. Mm -hmm. Right. While his energies are his actions and operations that manifest in the world, yeah. right? Allowing for a real participation in his divine life. The energies are fully divine but distinct from his essence. So in Islam we have the concept of Dat and Sifat, right? So his like it's it's not the same, but it's very it's yeah. a similarish thing. Yes, yes. And I'm kind of saying the same thing. Like from so an orthodox not, position, right? You're not, the reason why you're not saying the same thing. Even though I'm not saying the same thing. I'm not saying okay. I agree, I agree. But I'm saying in this aspect, we both agree that God's essence is absolute is like in from orthodox position, it's absolutely unknowable and transcendent. So yeah. how can you get to that through philosophy? 
by uh, by re, um, looking through what has, God has revealed to you. It doesn't have to reveal his whole essence. It has to, like, let's say, Mark Zuckerberg creates the metaverse. Yeah. He doesn't have to reveal his whole human essence into the metaverse. Yeah. He can make a little part of him. Yeah. So that's fine. Sure, but, uh, sorry, I, I still represents him. Okay. So I was. Um, sorry, man. I've lost track. I thought I, was, I wasn't even meant to be talking about but that bit. Can I, can I, about, yeah. Repeat. Repeat. Orthodox, repeat what you're saying. Upon the um, Orthodox perspective, yeah. Yeah, even though they're saying that the, uh, the attributes or like the the um, attributes that are manifested to human, they say is distinct. Does it make them separate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can worship the attributes of love. We can worship the attributes of, of light. Because although it's distinct from God, it's not separate from God. It's still a, it's still a him holistically. Like Christ okay. being distinct from the Father yeah, yeah. and not the Father, but we still worship God holistically. The attributes of God, we can worship them holistically, but you can't. That's what makes Allah impartial. Okay, so can I just... Um, so, because the, um, the Catholic argument... You're kind of using a Catholic argument, aren't you? Because the Catholics believe in I'm divine. No, no, I, I agree. I'm just saying, like the argument, because Catholics believe in divine simplicity, according to my understanding. Yeah, so I'm there is like no so all the attributes. And so does Protestants. But the but so from Protestant from my but from my understanding, the Orthodox um, distinction between essence and energies implies the division and composition of God, according to the Catholics. Which could appear to compromise that, divine simplicity. That is the Catholics saying it upon the, the Orthodox. The Orthodox don't say that about themselves. The yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. So I agree. If the I'm, Orthodox I'm take saying, on the, um, 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 divine simplicity, oh, so does Protestants, so does Catholics. But the, the guy I was arguing with, he's an Eastern Orthodox, right? Yeah. And the Catholics would use his same deductive reasoning against him. It, it doesn't matter what they say. Yeah. He believes, and he's, and when you're going to argue against someone, it's not okay. worth, worth it arguing a straw man. If you're no, 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 I'm not arguing a straw I know, man. Because, I know you, because listen, the, the way how you're arguing a straw man is, you're debating an Eastern Orthodox, and you're saying, oh, the Catholics believe this. Do you, uh, yeah, do but, you the, but the, the issue is... That's a straw man. Is, it's not a straw man when he comes with... Ortho, he comes with like Orthodox people, Catholic people, Protestant people. He comes yeah. united as an ecumenical person, and you guys are ecumenical as well, right? So you can't... Like, do you not see it as like... Logically, okay, do you not see it as incoherent that you guys are coming and using arguments against Muslims that you would use against each other? But surely in a debate you'd want to argue don't. against their... Because it's really hard to argue against someone who's coming with loads of position. Like, I don't come with a, I don't come with a Shia position or like, you know, the Mutazali position. Yeah, we don't say, what about the Shias, what do you think of that, you know? Like, you be attacked the Sunni position, um, or are, yeah. in the same way that you should attack the position that the individual you're speaking to. Yeah, but the, like... Okay, like that's a great point, right? And then, like your position is ecumenical, so you believe that all churches unite on the same God, right? Amen. Well, yeah. Believe that the ideal scenario should unite to one church, like because they all point to the same God, right? Yeah. And then when I brought up the argument from the Vatican councils, and I brought up Nostra Aetate and um, oh, Lumen Gentium, Catholic and I positions. yeah, and I brought up Catholic positions. Well, he's saying he's. Orthodox. No, no, I'm, I'm not using it on you. I'm not using it on you. I know, but you, know, you, was, you could argue using that for an ecumenical. But you can't argue that for an Yeah, but he, he, he said he was ecumenical to me. He's an Eastern Orthodox. I don't think he said that. He, he never, said he, he was never Eastern Orthodox and I was there. Yeah, he never... He, 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 he's, he's never, never said, he's said he's ecumenical. Yeah, I don't think I don't, he said I, I wasn't there. If he said it before I was there, sure, but from my experience, I was there. He can hold on to ecumenical views whilst being Eastern Orthodox. But you still need okay. to ask him what his views his are and attack his views, not someone yeah, else's, to say what do you think about it. Mirab, I'm saying if you're coming with an ecumenical position, you're coming with a position, it's very hard to pinpoint ecumenical arguments, right? Do you yeah. agree with me? Because you guys have, you can you can like kind of pick on, pick sure. on certain arguments and draw from it's, different traditions. Well, you could say that to an ecumenical, but if he's taking certain attributes of the belief of a full ecumenical, as, a, as an Ethan Orthodox, you need to make sure and ask him whether he affirms a certain part of the ecumenical belief and then attack it. Why you can't assume that he understands else. the full ecumenical okay, belief, because he may not. There may be some aspects of the ecumenical belief that he doesn't abide by, as an Ethan Orthodox, for example. So you only need to attack that, and you need to at least ask him whether he affirms it. You know? Otherwise, it's attacking a straw man, because you're assuming. Yeah, but he, he's... Okay. I understand what you're saying, but he's he's being incoherent with his positions because he was saying that he was saying that he agrees with what's in the council around like the religion of Abraham, right? Right? But then he's saying that our God and your God is achieved through um, natural theology. So like we have the same God when we use natural theology and deduct God through that way. But then when he's saying the religion of Abraham in Vatican Council, 
right? It's clearly showing above natural theology because the religion of Abraham shows that there is some element of revealed theology there. Yeah, because when you're talking about natural theology, your your imply your the implication is like okay from well, nature. Human be yeah, human beings should worship God. Yeah. Cool. You you haven't pointed out which God, but when he's arguing upon his position, now he's pointing you a direction. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, upon natural theology, we can be saying that okay, we both worship one God, we both worship God. Well, now upon our perspective and our belief system. Which God do we worship? No, but yeah, you, okay, no, no, I only, I, okay, okay, but when we were there, when we were there, right, he was basically saying that that's, he ascribes to, to he, he, he's, he's basically arguing for the Vatican Council's position, right, mm -hmm. but then he's not understanding that the religion of Abraham that is referred to in the, in the Vatican Council that's showing an element above natural theology, it's showing revealed theology because... Yeah, because the Vatican Council, Council is a Catholic theology, so they will imply a direction. So that shows that, like, the Muslims, we have um, some form of revealed theology, not just no, natural theology. No, it does. No, not... Well, if the, the Vatican... I haven't read the, um, the, uh, got uh, the, the article. Sure. But if the Vatican um, Council implies that, okay, everyone tries to um, worship God, or everyone tries to worship the same one God, but then the Vatican Council is a Christian council. Yeah. They will say, yes, everyone tries to worship the same God, but this is the concept of the true God that we're talking about. Even if you're, you're believing, even if you're an Zoroastrian, mm -hmm. you know, you can believe in one God and say that, okay, we both agree that there is one God. Mm -hmm. That's the agreement. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the council agreement. But then who that one God is, it, it becomes different. But you know? it, it, yeah, okay, so you're saying, but it says, it very clearly says like, um, okay, so this is just one quote, and I've got like plenty. I'm not going to go into them. I'm just going to pick one. Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium. But the plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the Creator in the first place, among whom are the Muslims. They profess to hold the faith of Abraham, and together with us, they adore the one merciful God, mankind's judge on the last day. So it's very... I, I know you guys don't accept the yeah, position, but he's... In that argument, he was like affirming what it says, what it says in the councils. And then when I say that, then... You see what he's being incoherent, because he's he's like defending the Vatican Council, and then when, and well, then he's when still he, saying they, that they don't. They say you guys, bad, you guys are not defending not the council, they're, right? They're, they're not flammable, right? If they say something bad, you dash it out. The the, the Pope recently said, "Oh, everyone, everyone, even atheists." I was like, "Yeah, yeah. bro, that's, that guy's an apostate. So Kick him out." Here's the thing: if, you know? he, if, if he's saying he's affirming the Vatican Council, for example, and he mentions something to potentially contradict something oh. you've read, it will be. I suppose reasonable in that argument to maybe make sure that he's fully agreeing with the Vatican Council because maybe he may not know, right? So if you say, uh, I, for example, this part of the Vatican Council says this, do you affirm specifically this part? If so, that's how does that work with your argument? Because that at least then gives some form of, yeah, I suppose, that's one thing. open understanding one thing. that he is believing that particular part of the Vatican Council. If he doesn't, then maybe he's going to bring that point up. knowledge I'm that he didn't know that that part's in the Vatican Council. You know, it's good to make that nine. distinct affirmation so that your argument is clear and concise. See, that's the thing. Would be my advice, but See, anyway. That's the thing. Upon the, the argument of the Vatican Council, even if the Vatican Council says that, yeah. Remember we said we go to the basis of, of where they get their theology from. The one that, um the, the Bible. The Bible the, the Vatican Council, the God that they, they, they worship specifically, yeah, when he get laid down the law, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. there was one specific you know, commandment that uh, that Islam does, cannot uphold, which is uh, upholding the Sabbath. You know. So even if the Vatican Council says it after the Bible is written. They are just men making mistakes and you can throw them out. Yeah, okay, you know? yeah, okay it was good talking about. You two, uh, we'll why do you we'll not come anymore, Malice? You know, I feel like you're the only person actually like have a nice conversation with. We're going for Everyone peace, wants to be shouted. No, I need to go back. I've got like yeah. a lot of stuff to do. He's got but a wife. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got a wife. That's why I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I've got a message. Yeah. Ah, come on, man. Why is everyone going yeah. to listen to I would, I, I'm, I'm glad we could agree on the yeah. fact that like, you know, divine revelation takes precedence over any philosophy. But there was always and progressive revelation. Uh, to, understand, to understand the, God's essence yeah. and nature, right? The, the, yeah, we agree on that. So your, your friend's right. argument was um, like not necessarily right, right? Just because mm. he... So, because because if, if the Quran is divine inspiration and divine revelation, then his philosophy doesn't matter, right? That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah if, uh, if we agree. If the yeah, is, if, if, then yeah, yeah. Well, we can talk about right. if... The Quran is divine revelation no. next time. We'll talk about Islam. No. All right, I'm not talking to you anymore, man. We're done, we're done. Okay. Um, so, I'm running, sorry. Yeah, yeah, finish, finish. Let's go.